I like to program on my TI-83 calculator and this last program I made is kind of cool and I want to show it off. So this is Connect4. The first thing the program does is create a 7x6 matrix and fill the entire thing in with zeros. In this program, the zero represents an empty spot on the playing grid. Now it prompts player X, who is player 1, to choose a column. We'll choose column 4. What the calculator does is it goes to column 4 and it goes to the first row in the rows or J values. Because it's a zero, the computer or the calculator will take that value and put in a value for X. Um, X's are ones, O's are twos. Now it is O's turn and O gets to choose a column. We'll choose the same column four. So the calculator will once again go to the first row, fourth column, but because this value is no longer zero, it's actually one, it'll add one to the J value and so move up one in the matrix and recheck. This value is still zero and so it will change it to two, which is an O. And the program will go back and forth as players choose values, X's and O's accordingly. So, once we have enough values here, you can actually see on the matrix in the calculator, this is what the game looks like, where zeros are empty values, ones are X's, and twos are O's. So that's basically the Connect4 game just by itself. Uh, I showed this program to Neil, and the first thing Neil does after putting on his troll face is try to place his value outside of the matrix. Of course, since the matrix wasn't defined for any points outside of the 7x6 boundary, the program immediately gave back matrix not defined error message and it kicked us out of the program. So I had to put in a test to make sure this didn't happen. So if we try to put, let's say, an X in column 15 somewhere way out here, it won't work. It'll, it'll, it'll just re-prompt you for another value. Same if it goes vertically. Let's say if this column was all filled up and uh, you try to place another one in the column, the J value would be tested and it would send you back if it found that J exceeded 6. So the basic program was written, but I also wanted the calculator to recognize when a winning situation was found. So my first thought was to have the calculator scan every winning position in the Connect4 matrix to see if there's four of the same value in a row. A quick calculation, however, shows us that there are 69 different winning positions in a single game of Connect4. Now in programming, it's bad form to use more processing power than you need to, and especially for TI-83 to have 69 different tests between every single move is, is just a waste. It's bad form. So this problem stumped me for a while and I stopped working on the program. Uh, but then I came to a conclusion. I had, I had a revelation. Any time you win a game of Connect 4, the last piece you just played is in the winning row. It has to be, or else the other player would get to move and the game would continue on. So this, while it's pretty obvious, has amazing implications. Instead of having to check every winning position after every move, you just have to check every winning position around the space where the last piece was played. So in a hypothetical situation, if one of these dots, let's say the bottom lower corner one, is uh, the last piece that was just played, the, com the calculator would only have to check these four values and these four values, because those are the only two ways you can win with this spot being the last one placed. That's a fairly low traffic scoring spot though. If you have a higher traffic one, let's say here, the calculator would check uh, these four, uh, these four and these four just for the vertical and you know have four checks here for the horizontal and it would check here for the diagonal and here for the negative diagonal. This means that instead of having 69 different checks the minimum number of checks is 2, this should actually be a 2, and the maximum number of checks is 13 just from the highest, tra uh, highest traffic areas. Um, going one step further you can see that you can't win in a vertical column without the two middle rows. Like you, you can't have four in a row without both of those values being yours. Likewise for horizontal, you can't win without the middle column. This explains why your first move X should always go bottom middle. To incorporate this into the program, the calculator will first check to see if you have the two middle rows, the two middle row values, and if you don't, it won't do any vertical checks. Likewise, if you don't have the uh, the middle column, it won't do any horizontal row checks to see if you have uh, a winning situation because you obviously don't. 
This means that the new adjust number of checks, the minimum number is 1 and the maximum is still 13. But overall, the average number of checks will be reduced significantly by these two, these two initial tests. As you can see, when there are indeed four values that are the same in a row, the calculator will recognize it and then will draw the line between the four values. Uh, th this I found kind of interesting. Um, if you look at the size of the programs, the Connect 4 game itself has four sub-programs. Uh, most, most of them are to do with drawing on the grid, uh, but the total size is 606 bytes. Um, the program that checks for the winning line is a sub-program of the Connect 4 game, but it's, uh, it itself is more than twice the size of the Connect 4 game. So that's all I really wanted to show, and we should definitely play Connect 4 sometime.